how Italian me with my ma peen on my shoulder. I'm gonna roll with that. Very restaurant style, very nonna style. So at any moment when you're being fresh, you're just gonna pow, scratch myself. Hi guys, I'm Laurie Vitale. On this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, I want to show you how I make my epic Italian meatloaf dinner. Now, if you've been a follower of mine for a long time, and if you just so happen to follow me on Instagram, which you should if you don't, then you will know because you'll have seen that we make this recipe a lot. I mean a lot. It's one of our family favorites. Every time my brother Sal comes to visit from Italy, this has to be on the menu at least once a week because it's his favorite meal of all times. My husband loves it, we made it for his birthday. I don't know, we make it all the time. It's really delicious. It doesn't taste at all like a regular traditional American um, meatloaf, which I love. And I have done a version of this years ago, but this is sort of an updated version that is just our go-to recipe. It's my mother's recipe, so I feel like mama would be proud. Let me run you through the list of ingredients not very big and this would make a great easter main dish if you're looking for something different you'll need your antipasti king and queens here prosciutto salami this is good genoa salami and some sharp provolone you need parsley and garlic some shredded parm breadcrumbs an egg some hard boiled eggs a little olive oil salt and pepper you need some good ground beef and then you'll also need some potatoes peas onions and that's it so good. I've got the oven preheated to 400. If your oven isn't as hot, because it's really strange, my downstairs oven, like this oven, it's really hot, so 400 is great. But my other oven upstairs, 425 is more like it because 400 isn't as hot. So um, between 4 and 425 will be perfect. Now, like I said, this would be great for an Easter main dish. Um, if you're doing Italian style, let me tell you, double up on everything and make it in a bigger pan and you'll serve eight to 10 people so happily, they might just never leave your house. In a food processor, I know, you just have to bear with me, okay? In a food processor, you're gonna add the provolone, the prosciutto, the salami, the parsley and the garlic. Why are we doing this in a food processor? I know you're asking me that because everything needs to be chopped so, so, so fine so that it incorporates with the meat, almost like ground uh, meats to go in with your meat. So that this just does a job much, much easier than to do it by hand, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Perfect. That's what you want it to look like. See that? Really finely chopped. Now, you can absolutely not substitute the sharp provolone with mozzarella, no way Jose, does not give you the same flavor whatsoever and it's also the wrong texture. So you've gotta use what mama's asking for here because it's the reason why it's the best meatloaf you'll ever have in your entire life. It's so good and it makes your house smell like a 1000% Italian household because a sharp provolone like cooks for a while and oh my word, it smells so good. Just you wait, okay. To this, you need a pinch of salt. Not that much because you've got saltiness going on over there. So just a little pinch. Parmigiano Reggiano, freshly grated. Breadcrumbs. And you need an egg. Along with some cracked black pepper. All right. Put some elbow grease in here and you're gonna mix everything together until it's well combined. All right, so what I have here is a large, uh, this is a cast iron pan, but you can use a baking pan or whatever. I just love the rustic look of this. And you take your meat, I take about half at a time, and you kind of just squish it, you know? Squish it down, because you can see I'm kind of making a well in the center. A well, if you will. <laughs> I crack myself up making kind of a well in the center, and then you're gonna take some hard boiled eggs. Now what I've done here is I have hard boiled these for seven minutes because they're gonna get some more cooking time in the oven. I know it sounds crazy, but it would not be an Italian meatloaf without hard boiled eggs. So then you carefully take the remainder of your beef. You can see I can do this with my eyes shut because I made this dish so many times. <laughs> um, you can just, you take the meat, right? And you just, 
you cover the eggs. And you, if you're going to take a little bit from over here, like this. Now this is huge, right? This will feed, I don't know, six people, I would say, pretty nicely. And it's just using one pound of ground beef, but you're using so much other stuff. Um, if you're gonna make this for more to four to six people, trust me, people will go back in for seconds and then the leftovers in a nice crusty Italian roll with some melted cheese on top, the best thing in the world, um, then I would double the recipe. And like I said, if I was making this for Easter, I would do two pounds of meat, four pounds of salami, or four pounds, four ounces of salami, four pounds of salami, could you imagine? Four, although, four pounds of, I really want to make a meatloaf with four pounds of salami and prosciutto. Four ounces of prosciutto, four ounces of salami, four ounces of sharp provolone, two eggs, half a cup of breadcrumbs. You know, you just double everything and you just let it cook long, a little bit longer, but not much because um, it's just going to be, it's the same thickness really. All right, so this looks perfect. I'm going to set this aside, wash my hands, bring over the potatoes, and we'll move forward from there and I'll walk you through the potatoes, which by the way, are just as important as the meatloaf. Like you can't have this without the potatoes and stuff around the sides, like it just won't do. So let me wash up and I'll be back. All right, so what I've got here is a couple pounds of potatoes that I have peeled. Once I peel them and I chop them into large chunks, what I did was I put them in a pot with cold water, a little bit of salt, brought it up to a boil and I boil these for two minutes exactly, drain them, leave them in the colander for a while until they were really, really dry, and then I put them in this large bowl. I've been doing that for a long time now where I pre-cook my potatoes a little bit before I roast them and it made the world a world of a difference. For some reason, I feel like it absorbs flavor even better, so that's what I've got in here. In here, I've got some sliced white onion, the yellow onion, and some frozen peas. I love frozen peas. Do not talk bad about my frozen peas. You need black pepper. You need some salt. And you need olive oil. You're going to toss all this together and you're going to put it on the side of your meatloaf. See, I'm licking my lips. <laughs> As the meatloaf cooks and it renders a little bit of its fat and the, per the provolone renders its fat, the prosciutto, the potatoes will be the bed that absorbs the flavor. Therefore, it's phenomenal. Now, I normally, if I do peas and onions and potatoes, I would add rosemary if I was cook cooking with chicken. I don't do that if I'm doing this because it's too much of a flavor. Um, it's like battling for flavor because the rosemary is so strong and you don't need to do that because this needs the flavor from whatever is coming out of the meatloaf. So put it on either side. This is gonna be so good. Just you wait and it's gonna go into my preheated oven, 400 for about 45 minutes or so. Give the potatoes a little zhuzh if you have to, halfway through. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's done. And you need to be prepared for what your house will smell like as this is cooking, because there's just nothing better in the whole world, especially if you're in a Italian household. No sorry, Bob. In it goes. All right, my meat, meatloaf, I was gonna say my meatball, huh? My meatloaf was in the oven for 45 minutes. I gave the potatoes a stir halfway through, and look at this, look at this. Yeah, uh-huh, mm. mm. I love potatoes, and when they taste like provolone, boy do I love potatoes. I'm gonna take this baby out, oh, that's really hot. It's gonna just take some finagle in here. I keep a parchment paper underneath so that it makes it easier to slide right off. Now, make sure you let this rest a little bit before you cut into it just like any kind of meat, you know? I like to cut it on an angle. I don't know why, I just think that you get really beautiful slices. Look at that. Huh? Huh? Look at that beautiful egg. I'm probably making a giant mess, but nobody cares because everyone loves this meatloaf. But no one loves it as much as I do. Let me tell you, this goodness right here, with a nice salad, maybe a nice tomato salad. Oh, my word. Yeah. A nice tomato salad along, along with it. And that is pretty much an ideal special occasion meal, if you would have asked me. Mm. 
There's never been a meatloaf in the history of meatloafs that's been better than this. It is so, I'm like chewing so fast because I'm so excited about it. It is so full of flavor. I don't know how to explain it. I just, I really don't. It's full of flavor. It's juicy. It's like nubbly salty, you know, from the meats and the cheeses. Mmm. And the peas and potatoes, perfection. Laura right, in the kitchen.com has got the written recipe for you. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Make this and you'll love it forever. And I'll see you next time. Bye.